Good. Oof, I mean, in the early game, I think that Echo still has a lot more aggressive heroes in the pool. Lolita in the early game, deceptively high damage with the, with, the, uh, with the Bulwark, right? And then afterwards, having that joy is definitely something that they will try and abuse. Yep, and again, the interaction of the Estes and Lunok surviving a lot is countered by the Bulwark because, again, the Lunok is throwing out projectiles that Yaoi can block. So that is something Echo can go for. With today's matches, wow, Oh My Venus hit a uh, milestone, 500 total assists in the M series. And V has been part of what? Just two so far. Well, <laughs> three. V played in M1. I mean, like, here's the thing. When you're playing a strat, like the Uve strat, that kind of stack, stat is like something that you're expecting. Now, looking at this, Wise invades the jungle of Carl TZ. And now, Blacklist International, as well as Echo, they're trying to read each other out. They're trying to see where the aggression is. Is Blacklist going to try to get another first blood here in this phase of the map? Oh, they are relentless. They're forcing a response from Carl TZ here. And they're going to get it. But we'll see. This buff, this creep, rather, still standing. Wise comes in. Retribution spent. Oh, wow. I mean, it seems like Blacklist want to try and get any single piece of lead they can get. And in the XP lane, the glue has been a lot uh, earlier in rotating compared to the Joy. So already a small victory for Edward on that glue pick. And for both teams, right, there's a very limited amount of pot control. So these high mobility dive heroes are going to have a huge role to play in that mid game. But for now, for Benny at least, he is just focused on scaling because later on, this is the man that everyone is looking towards to try and just deal enough damage to melt through everything, including the Blessing of the Moon Goddess. You're right, the storms are brewing. But now, in the Turtle Pit, Conti's with a massive pull. Here comes Sanford. Edward with a split split. Who's he going to jump down onto? And there's a Numenor Blast! Helping Conti's secure the Turtle. Down goes King Wise. Edward on the Conti's with the grab grab, forcing a cult altar from Sanji. Edward jumps off. Flicker as well. They retreat. Right now, Echo, they're starting the game strong. They're setting the tempo. But looking at Blacklist and trying to see the bigger picture, why they invade? Because is it really worth it trying to get that small jungle creep? I kind of feel like it is partly to deny, but even if they don't get it, it's kind of okay because they just want to slow down the rotation coming in from Echo because look at the draft. Blacklist International, they kind of want to wait it out just a little bit. I think they're trying to make sure that they abuse the early game potential of a Lunox because deceptively, even though Lunox is a late game hero, the early game is just sustainable, good burst damage, and like this, good outplay potential as well to try and save you from sticky situations. And look at Yaoi though. Oh! Sidestep! Numenon Blast! And they put up the Bulwark, forcing an old from by Venus, but Ohem is gonna fall regardless with Sanford dashing out through the back line. Popping that bolt, but it's an overkill. Echo now a thousand ahead, three minutes in. I mean, they get Oheb though, so is it really an overkill? And call it easy though, Ooh. go for a solo play. Gets Oh My Venus. Echo right now, trying to get all the control possible in this early game. Oh, they put the pedal to the metal, because look at Yaoi cutting behind this tier one turret. There's another fight. Here's why snap sandwiched by three members looking for some CC. That's Echo. Oh, they are in too deep. Wise down to fifth of his health. Pop in the ult. Oh my Venus putting them all in shape. Oh. Now there's Umino Blast cancelled. Edward the answer. Oh, oh wise very low. There's a grab grab and a pull. Another heal coming in. Edward taken down. Sanji gets the kill, and look at Sanford dashing on through the back line. Oh, oh, oh this is dangerous. This is dangerous. Look at Haji. He's very low as well. Dashing on through using the darkness. And Kotizi confirms the kill underneath tier one. It's only four minutes in, and Echo's only 2k ahead. All right, Leo, I, I, I'm going to take over. You can, you can like, chill for a minute because Woo, that was a long fight. To put into perspective how long that fight was, three appraisals wrap. Two Numinum Blasts. You're counting. When you have Ultimates just like resetting and using it again and again and again, I feel like even the minion creeps, they're like, um, excuse me, do I not exist to you? Am I a joke? Calm down, sir. Calm down. Both teams on the mission trying to gain that control. Unfortunately for Blacklist, Echo are the ones controlling, unless they can go for a play, but no, it's going to be the total secured. But Yaoi. Tries to go for a play, unfortunately it does not land. That is the limitations of a Lolita.
False engage there, close call. Blackness have been getting better in this five minute game so far at reading where Yaoi will put it. But still, again, that's what? Two sidestep Luminum Blasts that the Playmaker set. That's gonna be lethal if it gets him another time. But up top, Oheb gonna get oh. caught here by the Shadow Stampede oh. and the Storm Trumps of Filipino Sniper. Another one up top, but all in all from all my Venus. Puts Crown Tease in a compromised position. Here comes Wise with Divine Judgment on Osanji. Shadow Stampede pulling King Wise in, securing the kill for Carl Tease. That's two up top. None. None for Blacklist. I mean, you can tell right now the crowd control, the engage tools available for Echo. There's just so many of them, and you can see a, a huge contrast from game number two. Blacklist have no idea who's gonna try and make the engage happen, and Echo is taking full advantage of it, trying to confuse Blacklist as much as possible. Hey, here's the thing. We want the explosiveness from Echo. They delivered. Looking at the items right now, but before that, Echo, are they thinking about engaging again? Nope, never mind. Ooh. Arashi, looking at the items, is it okay for Blacklist to fight or not? Yeah, because looking at Beatrix, it doesn't look like that's the case. It's a tough situation because Oheb is too, uh, yeah, has two deaths. He's quite behind. And if you look at Kaltizi, he's itemizing for magical defense, understanding that the physical damage source from Blacklist is not you know, on tempo. So Echo is just playing it very, very smart. And on the flip side, Benny Cutie, just off the passive, off the carry, does so much damage to these beefy front lines. So if Blacklist just cannot end the fight quick, it's just too difficult. And despite the buzzing of the Moon Goddess, Echo, as of right now, with a 4k gold lead, have enough damage to melt through all of that. And what's scary is, Blacklist aren't really even that beefy, right? They're squishies with an Estus. So if they stand a little too long and Oh My Venus doesn't pull the trigger on the ult, then all the more is lethal. Here's a concealed play by Yaoi. Who's he gonna find? Gumino Blast right in your face! And it gets cancelled! He pulls out! Yaoi puts up the bulwark. It's a 4v2 down bottom. Edward gets the grab, grab. Yaoi's gonna have to fall here. Off cam though, Carl Deasy gets the turtle. Sanji very low, Cold out there already forced out, a lot of damage from Haji. Wise gets the kill, finally, Kaltizi in the middle of all five members. Here comes Sanford, can he get somebody redeem those first two deaths from Echo? Oh, he's still dancing, he's still dancing, but it's way oh. too much help from Blacklist. Wise takes down the young Sanford, and it's just Kaltizi and Sanji left. Benicute a little busy in mid, Appraiser's rat hitting two, knock up from Kaltizi, and now it's Kaltizi who's retreating, and he's very low. Can they get the kill? Edward shuts him down. Oh, but look at that oh, behind. What? Benny Cutie goes Benny in. Cutie gets a double, takes down King Wise. There's the brilliance from Haji, Sanji, and Benny trying. There's a Numenum Blast from Yaoi. Edward pushing him back. And that's a full disengage. I mean, you say a full disengage, but Echo and Blacklist, oh. they're looking for any reason to go through. Psych! There's a grab, grab, and a split, split. Pulling him back. Edward knows he can't get the kill on Yaoi. Now for reals, that's a disengage. Honestly, out of nowhere, the carry... Uh, uh, Benny Cutie just showed up behind them out of nowhere. Even I missed that. Due to so much action going on around the whole fight. This is an insane game. But if you look at it, Blacklist is still itemizing for a lot of uh, magical damage. Whereas Benny Cutie already at three items. So you can see that his damage is something that Blacklist cannot ignore. I don't speak Tagalog, but if I would use my imagination, I would imagine for both teams, there comes as you're like, Huh? Go? What, what, you, you want me to go? You want me to engage? Again? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll engage, I'll engage. Like, every single fight is like they're trying to find excuses of actually starting something. Echo marketing, blacklist marketing, this is a clear sign that LaFell wants to hear the mic check for this match. All right, now Lord has spawned. Both teams jockeying for position, looking for the pull. I feel like if Echo can go in together, not one by one like we saw in the previous fight. They have a really good chance of just winning decisively in these team fights due to their gold lead. But now Sanford is the one initiating that play, but look at the middle glass! Oh! Yaoi gets three underneath it! Ohem with Nibiru's passion, bombs away with Bennett, Cold Alta right on cue from Sanji, and with very low, Bandicuti takes him down, another falls, Wise is down, no rescue for Blacks International. They're not done, there's a stun on the Haji, and there's a pull, down he goes! Sanji gets the kill, three for none so far. V and O ever forced to back out. Lord going over to Echo.
4,000 gold lead, and now Echo is getting themselves a lord. They're pressuring down at mid. Will they try to get anything at all? Oheb misses the snipe. Right now, Echo, this is what we asked for. We wanted explosiveness, and I kind of feel like this first pick, Frederick, is really paying off. I I don't know, if, if it were me, I'm not letting this Frederick go through again. I mean, it is still sitting at a very high win rate, but honestly, Benny Cutie, despite all the skills, all the effort Blacklist is throwing at him, still on zero deaths. The protection coming in from his whole team is just so obnoxious as he is just free hitting in the back, doing a lot of damage. And with that passive, Edward can't even stay for long. Right now, the Lord is at top. Blacklist International, they're waiting. Ooh, if they get engaged. Divine Judgment on Ayawi. Called Altar Force out of Sanji, but they're still going to continue. Ooh. Going on Blast on the two. They're going to retreat underneath their tier one. Lord still alive, less than half health. Blacklist going to clean up house. Could have been lethal, but the world champions defend. I mean, you can see that for Echo, Burst damage isn't exactly what they have to go for. It's for the most part a lot of DPS from Sanford and Benny Cutie. So if Blacklist can just disengage from the long prolonged team fights, I think they can have a good chance in staying in this game. But with the empowered waves, Echo is going to try and make sure that they have all lanes under control and they have full coverage on the jungle of Blacklist International. Right now, I'm just looking at the KDA. Sanford 0 1 and 6. Yaoi 0 1 and 8. Sanji 2 1. And eight. This does show every single fight, everyone's basically involved. And they have a lot of ways to engage. And this is making it very difficult for Blacklist because they want to be able to disengage, but then the focus is everywhere. Yep. Who do you really focus on? Sanji? Yaoi? Sanford? You want to focus on Carl Deasy, but he looks nigh indestructible. They have perfected the Orca Pod strat. This is it. This is their version of the Ube, and it has its own distinct flavor, and I'm here for it. Look at the item right now. You can see that Sanford has the glowing one, so even more percentage HP damage being chunked out towards Blackness International. Of course, the Kaja, the Glue, as well as the Estes, these are all ripe targets for the source of damage from the Joy. And you can see that Sanji has built the Necklace of Durance as well, ensuring that the longer the fight goes, that healing gets less and less, and with an 8k gold lead, I don't even think they, I don't even know if they really need that. It's insane. But looking at this right now, Oheb already having three items, I kind of feel like it is definitely comebackable because Beatrix, of course, has been changed like every single patch. And the recent patch right now is that Beatrix is still very strong. It's just like a very strong, almost like ultra late game, like three items, four items. So it's definitely comebackable because they have the damage for it. It's just like, again, like the Orca pod strategy where you're like overloading the senses of your opponent and be like, what am I really gonna do with all of this pressure coming in? Oheb is gonna have a difficult time sniping the correct targets because who's the right target? Yep, and just as we're talking about it, Carl Tizi pulls the Lord. Could happen any minute. Orca pod versus Ubistrat. It could come to a head anytime soon. Lord at less than half its health. Look at where Yaoi is. Look at that big Ube blacklist in that purple side jungle. As far as I'm concerned, it's a free Lord for Echo. Yeah, it seems like Blacklist will back away from it. It's just way too risky without any information. That will be a free Lord for Echo. Gold lead extending to 10k. And by the way, Benny Cutie has an Athena shield as well right now. He is covering all bases, ensuring that a shutdown is the last thing possible for Blacklist International. I feel like that's a very good call because you have to understand the geography of the map because a lot of tight spaces is very good for Echo. A lot of bushes makes it so that at any point of time, a crazy engage could happen. And Blacklist, the way that they can counter engage is through Wise, is through Edward. Without a proper vision, it is going to be very, very difficult right now. Lord in mid. Oh, very good defense so far. Wise playing with fire. There's a Numino Blast with a flicker in by Yaoi. Stuns three underneath oh. tier three. That's an inhibitor at Jeopardy. And so far, it's dangerous for Echo. Very low. Three members backing out. Wise looking for someone, looking for anything. And they push back the Orcas. 
They went for an aggressive play, trying to just crack open the base of Blacklist International. But against a Beatrix, right, that's such a dangerous maneuver. The Dimbush Passion just chunks through all their HP bars. And even Benny Cutie almost gets, almost gets taken out. And fortunately, they were able to escape with their lives. But that is now something they know cannot be done. Exactly. 10,000 goal difference. And Blacklist almost killed three members of Echo. If that doesn't scream comebackable, I don't know what is. So now, it really is evident. At 50 minutes in the game, looking at the items, Blacklist have basically all the damage that they need. They just need to be able to catch Echo slipping. Exactly, with the Lightning Treasures finished from Haji as well, the Squishier members at least from the side of Echo need to be very careful. And even if you're Carl TZ in the front, we know that Lunox does a lot of damage against tanks as well. So slowly but surely, Blacklist are getting the tools they require to possibly fight back against Echo in these neutral objectives. The question is, how long is it going to take? Because at a 10k gold lead, with the next Lord spawning in 50 seconds, I think it's going to be a bit of a do or die situation for both these teams. Yep, we're about a minute away from this Lord. It's going to be enhanced, but not evolved quite yet. So it will ram into turrets. Thinking about how they can make this comeback maybe all the more convincing, I'm waiting for the KDA machine to get that fifth item. I think that's what's needed here. Yeah, and after, okay, so now looking at the map, what Blacklist really need to do is try to establish some kind of map pressure, but they can't do that until Echo shows their face because going inside bushes, seeing it as how Yahweh has been catching two members, three members, Four members. It's really hurting Blacklist now, and that's why we can see they're freezing the lane, kind of making it's like a reverse freeze where, like, we're making it so that everything is here. You guys want more gold? You guys are at 9,000. You want to push it to 10,000? Come here. We need to know where you are so that we can figure out how to contest. And that's the vision without vision we were talking about the other day, where Echo uses deduction uses the fact that they're not here, they're not here. Okay, we know for sure that they're in this bush. We can push the advantage. And Blacklist are forced to ube their way out of this comebackable strat. And again, another free lord for Echo. The free lord for Echo. And honestly, I thought they were going to take over the whole jungle of Blacklist, but they just played a bit more calm and calculated. And you saw earlier, a holy crystal has been completed for, for Sanford, I believe. Yeah. And that's an even higher amount of burst damage that Blacklist need to contend with. And with the Lord here, there's a chance that Echo can crack open, can split apart this very cohesive unit that Blacklist, uh, Blacklist International have. I gotta say, this is a very interesting strat, how they're turtling up yes. here, Blacklist International. Like, people watching this, they might be like, oh, they're like giving up. It's like, no, they're not giving up. They're purposely setting up their own waves so that it's at their own favor. Exactly, it's a counter freeze. Because it was clear that Echo was freezing earlier to deny our utilities and resources, but now Blacklist are on the same page as well. That was a close call. Could have been a pull. It's Wise who's the only one outside his base. Alone in the jungle against multiple members of Echo. That's a dangerous spot to be playing around with. But maybe Blacklist are trying to use this as a bait. They can go for a big Divine Judgment here if Wise can spot an opportunity. Oh, that's already one inhibitor down in bot. Numenon Blast confirming the kill. Giving it over to Benny Cutie. That's one massive ult away from Echo. How can Blacklist capitalize? They pop Yowie here. His immortality goes down. Top lane inhibitor goes down as well. Edward survives, but only just as Oh My Venus uses the ult to save Agent Zero. Now the base is in jeopardy. Will Echo force their way into Blacklist's base? They're waiting for a wave. Let's see if they can get this. Sanji blasted here by Haji and Ohem. In comes Sanford, going into the back oh. line. Popping the Filipino sniper. The base gonna go down. Echo takes game three. The pod of Orcas again, overwhelming the senses of Blacklist International. Giving them options, giving them pressure. What are you gonna do next? And looks like Blacklist International couldn't answer what Echo is pushing against them right now.